About two weeks ago, just before Nigerian senators and their counterparts in the House of Representatives embarked on the latest vacation to celebrate Easter and Salah, another allegation of budget padding was made by Senator Abdul Ningi from Bauchi State on the floor of the Senate. His colleagues, led by Senate President Goodwill Apabio, would not take that and promptly suspended him for three months. In the wake of that allegation, some of the senators spoke and admitted that they had indeed received certain amounts of money, which were not considered during deliberations over 2024 appropriation bill. We are now being joined for a chat around this and a few other matters that occupy the members of the upper chamber of the National Assembly in recent times by Senator Jaragbe Agom Jaragbe, who represents Cross River North District in the National Assembly. Happy Easter and welcome to the morning show, Senator. Happy Easter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we're just going to dive straight in, into the issue of the budget. When discussing the 500 million naira allocation that some senators received, it appeared that you were drawing attention to the inequity in constituency budgets within the Senate. Now, for example, your senatorial district, Cross River North, received 25 million naira earmarked for the acquiring of cassava processing machines, fabric weaving equipment, and other things to aid widows and disabled individuals and out-of-school women from the Ministry of Women Affairs. Now, in contrast, the Akwaibom North Senatorial District, represented by the Senate President, Goodwill Akbabio, received a significantly higher allocation of 2.5 billion naira for empowering women through the provision of deep freezers. Now, the Senate President's allocation for his district is a hundred times larger than yours. Is this a common pattern of the disparities within the Nigerian Senate? And do these figures raise questions to the public about the fairness and accountability in the allocation process? Thank you very much. Today is my Thanksgiving, and I thought I'll be asked questions that bother on my representation of my senatorial district and not about the budget, you know. I'm actually not in the mood to talk about the budget at this point in time because I'm going to church in a couple of minutes. But um, uh, the 25 million in the Ministry of Women Affairs for my senatorial district is not the only thing I have in the budget. Uh, each senator has constituency provisions for, for projects and zonal intervention for projects. So as you see, 25 million in the Ministry of Women Affairs, you could see 200 million in another MDA. So um, you can't actually uh, scrutinize the budget based on one line item. But I want to talk about my Thanksgiving and my representation um, representation I've offered to my people at this point in time because I'm doing a Thanksgiving and they have come out in mass to celebrate the victory we had in, in the last election. All, all right, Senator Jerry, that, that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, let's start with your Thanksgiving. That's, there's no problem with that, but we are also interested uh, in your duties too, you know, as a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So do speak to us first uh, about your Thanksgiving, the fact that you have you know, has surmounted all the legal orders, you know, to retain your seat. But then in celebrating this victory, uh, what would be your word uh, on the call that uh, it might be better, and not just for senators or uh, uh, lawmakers in general, uh, but for elected officials uh, in totality to have all uh, legal battles resolved until they're actually sworn in? Would that be of interest to you because even your own case could have gone differently. Thankfully, you won, but then will that be, will you think that this is the best way going forward uh, as far as the resolution of, um, uh, you know, challenging elections is concerned? I think that um, when someone wins an election, the person should be sworn in because um, if the person is not sworn in, you are depriving the person of his rights. So if the court obtains the elections, then um, it is deemed that the person was never a senator or a member of the House of Rep Reps. 
But before that decision is taken, the person is the rightful candidate to be sworn in and should be sworn in as senator, member house of assembly, or member house of reps, or as governor or president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right. Um, Senator, I know that you, you, you said you were going to talk about your Thanksgiving, but we didn't hear that. And you also talked about the fact that you don't want to um, highlight the budget. But you were the one that opened a, a Pandora, Pandora's box uh, in the Senate, alleging that some senators collected $500 million while others collected less. I mean, is this the first time you're knowing about budget padding? And you're not the only senator. We had uh, Abdul... Uh, Ningi, who also alleged uh, budget padding. I mean, what are your thoughts on his allegation as well? And do you think that he was uh, fairly treated? Well, you know, in the past, I used to hear that lexicon, budget padding, uh, when the former president, President Buhari, um, disagreed with the budget that came from the National Assembly. But in this case, the executive came out to say that there was no padding of the budget. And it is the duty of the legislators to, 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 make, to do the budget. But when you talk about budget padding, um, that's not what I talked about that day. I talked about the inequitable distribution of projects. And I said some senators got more than I got in their senatorial districts. And we are all... Um, equals and um, the presiding officers and um, other principal officers are where they are as a function of primus inter pares but this disparity should not be so much that's what i said and um, i said that we are all called people because um, some people got more than some and all of that in the budget and uh, the rest of us are not complaining. That was my position. Okay, sir. I mean, that disparity that you just spoke of, especially when it comes to the principal officers of the Senate, was what I was trying to highlight earlier when I asked about the Senate president receiving a hundred times um, the amount that you received in a single ministry. But beyond that, when it goes to the disparity of allocation, in whole terms, as you said, not a single line item. You said some of us did not receive 500 million naira. So are you willing to discuss how much your senatorial district received? Because it has been reported, of course, that the Senate president received over 50 billion naira. And some members of the Senate, including Senator Ndume, who is, I believe, the majority leader in the Senate, received even just 1 billion naira for a single line item. So how much did your district receive? And how bad is this disparity within the Senate? Anyway, I have not scrutinized the budget. I didn't get a consultant to scrutinize the budget, but I know that I did not receive as much as some other senators received. And for okay, what sir, Ndume said, can I ask, Senator Ndume said that day. Can I what, ask how what, much you did receive? Yeah? How much did you receive? Not I, I did not receive. There is provision. How for, much? How much was provided for projects for, in my senatorial district? Yes. How much? My zonal intervention is about two hundred and something. My constituency provision is about four hundred. So, I think I I have close to a billion in the budget, but I also said some got more. And I, did, and I am a ranking senator, so I should have gotten more. That was my position. Sorry, sir, I just want to follow up on that because... So when, when, when Senator Ndume said some animals are more equal, I think I'm very much, very, very unequal with some others who got more than me because I'm ranking. All right, then, Senator Jari. But, um, two things uh, arising from what you have said. Uh, some senators got more than you. One, uh, before your microphone was uh, uh, turned off that day, what more were you going to say? Uh, how, how clearer were you going to be in making your position known? And since that time, uh, have you tabled this? That's an attempt. That's an attempt. 
at rewriting history. Rufai, can this, I speak about my Thanksgiving? This is so not Rufai. My this is, for this me. is Steve, actually. <laughs> this is not Rufai. This is Steve. Okay, I, okay, okay. And I'm not trying to rewrite history. Okay. Anyway, thank you. I can't even see you. <laughs> okay, so this is Steve. And we can see you, you know, clearly and we hear you yeah. loud and clear. So what happened? Why, 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 why were you not allowed yes, to please. finish? Why were you not allowed to finish what you were going to say? And what more did you intend to say on that day? I think there was a technical hitch on, on the, um, I think the microphones or something went off. I don't know what happened, but um, we are not at plenary at this point in time. And so I can't say anything about that. All right, the reason why I'm asking uh, Senator Jarigbe uh, is, is because of what a lot of people are saying uh, about the legality of this whole idea of constituency projects and constituency allowance. If you recall, if you recall last, last year, uh, a senator, one of your colleagues, Senator Husseini Babangida from Jigawa, uh, did present a bill uh, seeking to have a legal, a legal framework uh, for, the, for how senators, you know, spend uh, and disburse, disburse and spend uh, constituency allowance. But you know what happened on the floor. Uh, that bill did not fly. So when you say that uh, you got, your constituency got close to a billion, uh, some people got more than you, on what legal framework is the Senate leadership uh, allocating money in the name of constituency allowance to people like your good selves? What is the authority, you know, for 17 okay, billion? Okay, let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. Please go I ahead. Have, go ahead, yes. Go ahead. Yes. From the House of, I, I was in the House of Reps, I'm in the Senate, and I can tell you that in all the wards in my federal constituency and senatorial district, I have projects in all of them. Without this project on ground, there would have been no federal government presence in my senatorial district. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's laudable. Without the issue of zonal interventions and uh, constituency projects, we will have next, uh, we would actually have nothing in our senatorial district. And our people will have to suffer for it. And so that, that is understood. But I'm saying that on what uh, a legal framework uh, is, is the presence of the federal government being felt? Uh, uh, what law allows f uh, a, a constituent, constituency allowance? How lawful is it, frankly speaking? The legal framework that is provided is the fact that um, the budget lies with the National Assembly. Senator Jaribe, the floor is yours now. I'd like for you to talk about your Thanksgiving. That's what we're waiting for. I mean, that's what you've been talking about. It appears that you want to talk about that before you answer okay, any okay, other question. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. As the word implies, Thanksgiving, I want to give thanks to God. My people want to thank God. It was a very, very turbulent election against a very formidable opposition, as you know was a sitting governor, an incumbent governor at the time. I was running against me. He did everything, but my people stood by me. And that's why I've come back to thank God. And they are joining me to thank God today. I have done a lot across the senatorial districts. And um, I think my people are happy with me. And it will be evident today as they come out in mass to celebrate and thank God with us. All right, great. I hope that um, uh, we've given you the opportunity to say that. But, you know, I had asked you earlier if you thought Senator Ningi was treated fairly after he was suspended for uh, three months for alleging that the budget passed by the National Assembly for the 2024 fiscal year uh, was uh, 25 trillion, I believe, while the one being implemented by the presidency is 28 trillion. He was suspended for that allegation. Do you think that he was uh, treated fairly? Well, I, as I said before, that was a preponderance of opinion that day, and um, there was nothing anyone could do about it. Um, minority will have their say, but majority will have their way, as it is. So that was the position of the Senate. 
as per the preponderance of opinion. But the issue of um, two budgets and all of that um, does not apply at all. It's unfounded. Um, the three trillion he, he talked about was somewhere, located somewhere. Um, like I said, I have not scrutinized the budget, but it was explained. And I thought that he should be given an opportunity to apologize to the Senate. And that's what I said that day. But um, what happened, happened, because uh, it was a preponderance of opinion. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I'd like to just follow up on something that you have said twice today. You have said twice today that you did not scrutinize the budget. However, you did vote on it, I believe. So I would like to ask, one, if you voted to pass a budget that you yourself did not scrutinize, and two, if you voted yay or nay in order to suspend Senator Ningi, and also finally, just because, you know, we have spoken about Thanksgiving, so we can go a little bit more to the budget. You said earlier that you, some animals are bigger than others and some senators, due to their size, receive more than other senators. However, would it not be more equitable to distribute allocation based off of the population size or the needs of the people rather than the stature of the senator that was elected? I said my position on that day was that Senator Abdul Nengi should be given an opportunity to apologize to the Senate because um, he didn't have his facts right on the issue of um, uh, three trillion and um, the, the executive operating two budgets at the same time. That's what I said. And then um, I know I have an idea of um, what I got and what other senators got. Yes, but you said you did not scrutinize. I made. Yes, but you said you did not scrutinize the bill. So, and you know, we have spoken earlier on this show about how quickly not. the bill was passed. You said earlier that you did not scrutinize the bill. However, you did vote on it. So, did you vote to pass a bill that you did not scrutinize? Anyway, I didn't scrutinize the budget line by line item, and um, um, it's um, the collective responsibility of the Senate and all the senators um, to be blamed for whatever inadequacies, and I also take responsibility. But I think that the executive should submit the budget earlier than what they did this time around, so that the Senate will have, the National Assembly will have time to scrutinize the budget, look at it line by line item. Yeah, the budget line items were not scrutinized properly by me. But is this not an indictment at this point, Senator? I mean, is this common practice in the Senate for senators not to scrutinize the budget line by line before I told you before that, that senators or National Assembly members are not infallible. I said it before, and I'm not going to eat my words. All right, that, that's, that, that's understood, but what um, my colleagues here are saying is that it is, in fact, self-indicting. It's not about infallibility or any other word. Uh, it, it's a kind of self-indicting when the only job that we know that senators have is to pass laws and scrutinize appropriation. But here we have you saying that you didn't, because uh, the, the budget wasn't presented on time, you didn't have time, you know, to scrutinize it line by line. May I ask you, therefore, uh, 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 strictly speaking, if part of what you didn't scrutinize was the three trillion uh, that Senator Ningi was talking about, because we have had uh, the president, Ashwajibola Metinubu, saying that it's a matter of arithmetic, and that people who have read it, you know, will know that uh, uh, the figures, you know, uh, added up. Uh, did you scrutinize that part of it, and what's your understanding? of why that three trillion plus uh, was not part of what was uh, in the open uh, for all senators and for all Nigerians to see line by line what constitutes that, that you know, uh, amount of money. Okay, if you had watched um, the chairman appropriations, 
Senator Olamilekon. He, he, he reeled out the subheads, the items on the first line charge, and um, the, the GOEs. So, and a uh, cumulative of that came to about um, three trillion. And that was the explanation given that day. So, I think that suffices. Did, did you have to rely on Senator Yayi's uh, submission on what constitutes uh, how three trillion would be spent on the budget? Or were you, you know, were you part of looking at it? Because part of what Senator Yayi said was that that has been the practice in the last three years not to submit the entire full budget uh, for the scrutiny of members. Are you saying that you didn't take a look at that and you had to rely on what Senator Yayi said? That is the chairman. He is the chairman of appropriations in the Senate. Yes, yes, I'm aware, but I'm, I'm asking uh, that the line items constituting uh, the three trillion that Senator Ningi said was not uh, that most of the senators were not aware of. Are you saying that you you only had to rely on Senator Yayi's submission and that you didn't see that part of the budget? That part was highlighted in the course of our debate, and. Um, when questions were asked, it was explained. And we did the arithmetic, as uh, referred to by Mr. President, and it was the three trillion that was not part of the 25 uh, trillion. Is that normal? So that was enough explanation. Is, is that normal that uh, three trillion uh, will be separated uh, from the the main budget is, is that is is that acceptable in normal uh, uh, parliamentary practice? Well, um, it it wasn't uh, it it wasn't novel. That has been the practice. That senators won't see the entire uh, section of the budget, and they will still pass it, uh, even when the. Uh, 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 they didn't have to read it line by line or know what uh, such amount of money will be used for? Well, it was explained, as I told you, and um, those items are on the first line charge, and um, they are on a different document altogether. Okay, sir. Thank you, so sir. So I think it suffices. The explanation suffices. Uh, you can, what you can do is to look at the document, and do your computation and look at the, the budget itself that we passed and put it together if it comes, if, 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 if um, the numbers um, agree, then we are good. All right. All right, sir. Um, I mean, I do find it so fascinating that a senator would say that the budget was not um, scrutinized by himself line by line when I myself have scrutinized the budget line by line. <laughs> but <laughs> what can I say there? I think now we, let's move on to the issue of the CNG initiatives okay, coming okay. out Did of the federal Did you say you, you, you scrutinized the budget line by line? Yes, sir. Did you? Yes, sir. Did you? Yes, sir. Okay, what's the budget of your senatorial district where you come from? Sorry, sir? What's the total budgetary provisions, provision for your senatorial district where you come from? You're asking me for the arithmetic of my senatorial district. I scrutinize it by ministry. So if you want, <laughs> I can tell you your budget in different ministries if you wish to. I have quoted your own budget to you today. Okay. Yes. But let's move on to the CNG initiative, <laughs> if you're willing to. Hello. I mean, I, wasn't le I was not elected by my, um, the people of uh, Cross River North. You were. It is your duty, I believe, not mine. But let's move on to your duty as a chairman of the Committee on Gas. Do you want Have to I? do that? Let's talk about the CNG initiative by the federal government. Come on, is it what's coming? this budget, budget talk now? I want to talk about my Thanksgiving and my representation to my people. No, 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 no. People are doing budget, budget, budget. Yeah. I'll walk away. 
Well, I think we're if going to go on a quick... If you want me to say something quick. that I, I will go and face Wahala, we should allow me or <laughs> let me serve my people quietly. Senator, you have spoken about your Thanksgiving, uh, and uh, Adesua is asking you <laughs> Major about... Major leaving me, I go do my work. <laughs> are you with us, sir, Senator Jaribe? You're because alive. you are still live on, on air. It looks like we, we lost our Senator Jarigwe. Uh, it appears uh, Oji and Adeswa that is not um, too comfortable uh, with you know, defending that core aspect of his job, uh, which is you know, uh, but, uh, to, pass, to, pass, to pass the budget. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a bit reluctant. He wants to celebrate his victory uh, in church today. And it's very, that's very much in order. And he has spoken about it. Absolutely did. He has spoken about it. And, and he says that he doesn't want to get into trouble. What trouble? Will he be getting to? All right, Senator Jaribwe, uh, we understand you're back with us. Can you hear us in the studio? Senator Jaribwe. Okay, we, we, okay, we, don't, we don't have him. So, um, I, 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 and, I, and I think that um, um, it, should it should be of interest to him that a journalist will say that he has read the budget line by line, uh, whereas a senator elected, mm. you know, by his people, uh, will say that he, he, you know, he, he relies on the opinion of the chairman of the appropriation bill yes. in, in, in passing uh, a good chunk of the budget, more than three, three trillion, you know, uh, uh, into law. Uh, I find that rather curious, you know, and rather unusual. But here we have Senator Jaribwe Jaribwe, yeah. yeah. you know, saying that uh, well, that's so not unusual. I, I, I mean, we did hear him there saying that he didn't want to get into trouble, and it just sounds like a huge indictment on the whole National Assembly at this point, because Definitely. I don't know what he means by he doesn't want to get into trouble, because um, at this point, what you really need to do, like you said, is to be able to scrutinize the budget, and I think there needs to be a complete overhaul of that system at this point he has to explain to us what he means by trouble yes because i mean if, 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 if it is if it is suspension he might be facing i mean because that was live and i mean this is uh live television yeah i don't know what he was thinking i mean again i will say i do find it fascinating that obviously he's asking me now for my senatorial yes, and you're not a senator you're not, not a senator you're not elected you're not, you're not even obliged to, 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 to answer but you, yeah, i mean i mean your response was you know was was apt yeah. you are the elected he's official the, but beyond, you should defend he, what you yes. what you pass into law and i think something that this is is first of all it's an indictment on not just himself but the senate as a whole but it's also revealing why we have laws like the 24 one of the cyber crimes <laughs> act where you're like who read this yes. and passed it yes. Yes. there are so many times that we see bills or line items that are absolutely ridiculous to the plain eye yeah. and yes. you're like how did this pass our uppermost chamber yeah. and now we know how because according to this senator they do not scrutinize what they pass line by line That's what and that is a huge shame yes a huge it shame well it all is. right well i hope we can get him back on the show so he can clarify <laughs> what he means by he doesn't want to get into trouble what, what was his fear this point. yeah his fear and, and like like the time they turned off his mic and he called uh, uh, a technical failure <laughs> i guess we've just seen another technical <laughs> another failure, technical failure.